Hello, everybody. Welcome to the first, we don't really know what we're calling this yet, the UNA Percussion Podcast, the UNA Podcast, who really knows? Um, my name is Caleb Tanini. Uh, I'm going into my fourth year at UNA. I'm also here with Logan McCoy, who you're in what, your 11th year at UNA, you old guy? You know. Yeah, well, something like that. Uh, yeah, also we're here there. with Jake House, who's in his third year, but graduating. Hello, Jake House. Hello. And we're also here with Truman Clark. You might know him as the center snare. He's going into his fourth year as well. So what's hello, up, Truman Clark. Uh, we all you? collectively play in a quartet, and we have somehow named ourselves X Percussion. Uh, so you could also call this the X Percussion Podcast. We'll figure it out. Um, so our first, the thing we're going to talk about today is just how school has changed for everyone due to uh, COVID-19 and especially like dealing with it as a music major, getting your practice time, taking care of lessons and classes and stuff like that. So I'm going to let you go first, Logan. How has coronavirus changed your school life? I guess like the biggest thing, would it kind of like impacted my productivity, but in a weird way because I was already kind of the I prefer being alone type person. So when this all happened, I actually became much more productive. Like we did get a lot more assignments just because you're, you're trying to supplement the classroom time, but I've actually managed to be more productive in a sense. I've gotten a lot more work done. I've gotten a lot more projects that I've been wanting to start on and done. I've been working on learning some stuff on the computer Been working with uh, Ableton, trying to figure out how that program works out. Just doing a lot more stuff now. Uh, it is it is difficult in terms of classwork just because there's some things that absolutely can't be taught online too well. But that's, of course, it, it is what it is. Everyone's doing their best, and I think we're all handling it pretty well. Nice. How about you, how about you Truman? Um, you know, it's, it's done a lot of interesting things for me. Um, like... I've always been like somewhat involved on the tech side of stuff, but um, it's this has kind of forced me to get more involved with that. Like, you know, I improved like my computer setup at my desk. Not that I get more work done because I am sitting at my desk a lot more than usual. Um, but like Logan, I've been messing with Ableton Live, Pro Tools first, Adobe Audition, just like all those programs to see like which one suits me the best um and i have like gotten a lot of work done like it's been weird having all these assignments rather than like preparing for my lesson every week or lessons but um i, I think the assignments that we've done well good job i take those lessons and I don't know like I've just been doing a lot more work than I normally would normally I would just be practicing mm -hmm. practicing would be taking up most of my time mm -hmm. indoor would be taking up most of my time yeah, so, yeah. how about you Jake what's going on with you I think the, the most interesting thing that I've run into is the week we got out for all of this like they canceled school the week after that, I was supposed to be at Hazel Green doing the Drummond auditions. Mm -hmm. So all of that got moved online, and I was ha I'm having to figure out how to do that just on the fly. And that's something I didn't expect, but it's worked out you know, so far because we got a Facebook page and kind of doing the same thing UNA is doing right yeah. now. But um, I'm assuming UNA is going to kind of wait a little bit to set the line to see how everyone plays together. And that's what I'm planning to do, at least at Hazel Green. Yeah. Other than that, I guess... If you're not taking a bunch of classes, it's not really that much different because you're just getting your assignments on Canvas. And all of my mm -hmm. teachers have done a pretty good job of that. So. Yeah. Mine's a little thing. weird. Um, mine's a little weird because I actually have this keyboard. Yeah. So I'm actually still taking, like, marimba lessons every week. Um, so that's still interesting. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm still learning the rep. And I think I have to do a video of me playing that as, like, my jury for that. Um, but so... Mine hasn't really changed almost at all. Like, obviously, with all the assignments that we're getting for Dr. Wiggins's lessons, though, obviously that's different. But just an overall like 
with all the other classes, and then with Marimba, like everything's just kind of, just kind of the same. So it's a, it's a little weird just doing everything from home. Yeah. No matter what, but so is Halo Green doing like it's all online, like your videos? Yeah, it's just like they recorded the videos and sent them to me, and then um okay told them what they made for now, and that's said we're gonna have to wait for sure, maybe yeah. move some people around. I think if I, mean, I that's just, that's essentially what U and A is doing too. Cause yeah. In our video next weekend they're due on Saturday second. Is that right, Kim? Yeah, they're due on the second of May. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So like a lot of us have been like. It's been interesting because, you know, like, chop sessions got canceled. So on Friday and Saturday, I actually held chop sessions over Zoom with oh. all of the snares. I forgot you did and that. And the first day was a little rough. We got the kinks worked out the second day. But um, it was definitely interesting. Like, yeah, not normal. And just this whole audition process for everyone has just not been normal. I think it'll, it's interesting, and I don't know if we're going to set the whole line, like, just after seeing the videos, or if we are. Like, well, that's you know, completely... I think the way that I understand it to be working is, you know, we all send those videos in, and then along with the staff, they're also having uh, one other person, like, per instrument, like, outside of the UNA lo- world that are also going to watch the videos and grade on that. So it's like there's a really wide overarching view of who's going to see all the videos and set the line that way. And I think that's going to be a really cool insight to see what they have to say mm-hmm. about the videos. Um, so really all I have us down to talk about is just like how things are going online. So I guess my next thing that we could do is um, just with the overall workload, how have professors been handling just going from in person two to three times a week to just nothing but online instruction. Yeah, I would say none of the none of our professors at least signed up to teach online classes, so nope. that's strange, definitely for them. Yeah, yeah, and you know, and I get it's it. Like, I get frustrated. And Doctor Wiggins said himself, and I think Mr. Mercier, the music theory teacher, said that like they had to figure out how to move their class online within like a week or two and that was all they had and then they had to go ahead from there so yeah i think especially given that situation they've done like a pretty solid job mm-hmm. at doing this yeah i think it's very weird to take classes that have never been taught online before and then just like have it be online like yeah. it's kind of hard to take a sight singing course online <laughs> I did. I did you, yeah, years ago. but you did it at somewhere else though. But like, just trying to do that is like it's never happened before here. Like it's never been taught online. So within 24 hours, everything is just shifted to online. It's kind of weird. Um, yeah. but I noticed that the teacher that their professors have put like their 100% A game, best foot forward, trying to get this stuff worked out. And it's not the best. Like there's definitely a lot of stuff that could be fixed, but. When you're not designed to be online, it's never going to be perfect. And honestly, most music classes probably shouldn't be online Mm -hmm. because a lot of them do involve training your ear, especially like sightseeing and ear training. Just the fact that's online is like, it's kind of crazy. Yeah, it's a little... Like I had, um, I'm music history too right now, and Mr. Flowers, you know, obviously that's going to be tough for him because he's very used to playing the music for us in class or getting on the piano and talking to us about certain melodies that would pop up throughout the, the eras. And like, now that you can't do that, it's, it's incredibly hard for him. And I hate that. Cause that's like, that's probably one of the most insightful classes you could get on campus for music. Cause he's super knowledgeable on that. And he's super passionate about it and having to go on to an online format where he can't like physically talk to us face to face. Like he usually would. It's kind of, it kind of hurts a little bit, but do what you gotta do that man's a walking treasure trove of knowledge it's insane how much that man knows just about music in general it's crazy Mm -hmm. well you know mr mercier is kind of the same way if you've had like theory or especially sight singing like if he's demonstrating something you know he'll just go over to the piano and just like demonstrate like a whole bunch of chords on there and now like 
it's kind of interesting in the past few classes he's been like going on his finale and just like putting them in there like anything we're going over so that we can still hear it and see it so yeah. like it's very it's weird good. he does like the little screen share thing on our zoom calls yeah it works pretty well it's definitely it's definitely zoom is making a killing right now <laughs> yeah i'm very surprised at how well that's actually working like right. I was I was fully expecting it to be a train wreck. I'm not gonna oh, lie, but well, it's it's working very well actually. I was not hopeful whatsoever that Zoom. But now, worked. now like I'm seeing like <clears throat> on the TV the other day, I saw a bunch of ads for like all these other video companies that are like advertising theirs. It's like, well, you know, we can do these things as well. But like, I guess Zoom is just like the most popular one, like the one that was known for everything they're doing. Well, Zoom. I just think it's funny. Zoom already had contracts with a lot of universities. Yeah. So it's like they were already there. They just weren't thought about to be used in this kind of setting. So now that like everybody has to do that, they're like, "Hey, we've been doing this for a while already. So let's just let's just do it through Zoom." But I like Zoom. Works. I haven't had any problems with it. I actually I think Zoom's better than most things really when it comes to like video conferences. I, I think Zoom kind of takes the cake on that. Yeah. 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 I will say, going back to, like, that Zoom call that I did with all the snare auditionees, like, yesterday and the day before, it was very interesting because, like, if you get on your phone on Zoom, like, the microphone picks up your practice pad on there or whatever you're playing on just fine. But if you're on a laptop, there's, like, a setting on there where it disables all the background noise or, like, intermittent noise that it labels it as. So in order to hear your practice pad on there, you have to go into the settings and, like, disable that and it took like a couple of times for us to figure it out yeah there's definitely and that's just them trying to make it to where if you have a kid in the background you don't hear the kid crying all the time yeah like it makes oh. sense yeah. I, it just i just thought it was funny because like we all had to go in and figure out like how we could be heard so that right the, our playing wasn't that like piano is 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 that's the first thing I had to do when we were doing online lessons with Mr. Crespi. He was like, go in your settings and change all of this. <laughs> oh, the yeah. first lesson is like, let's set this up the right yeah. way. Let's make sure we can hear everything. Yeah. There was yeah. definitely like a good solid 10 minutes in, in a, a lesson with, with Mark where we had to figure out some audio things because of it. Where yeah. we're just kind of like staring at each other. I'm like, we like, we're clicking around for a while. Like, we look at the camera. Like, is it working? No. And we go back and do it all again. And again. It was, it's, it's a, it's an interesting format. But I, yeah. I think because everyone, like, literally everyone in the country is doing this now, I think they're, we're going to see a lot more online classes oh, in this yeah. kind of format, or at least like a, a lot more hybrid type class because it does work. It's not that it's completely broken. It's just, it's actually pretty efficient this way. I think kind of the way I think some universities are going to look at it is they're picking classes who they've wanted to see if it would work online, but never just went for it. And now they're seeing, would this class work online? Like, does this class transfer? Can it be taught? Do students participate? Like, you're seeing, do classes work online? Um, back to lessons, like, I do composition lessons, and they're pretty much the exact same as in person. Because I just share my screen on Sibelius and hit play. And as long as I have checked the certain box that makes audio play, it works. So those lessons work out just fine. Um, how does it feel doing the lessons like with Pam? Because you said nothing really changed. So like, how's really, the workflow? How's it all I, different? I mean, the workflow is really the same. I mean, I feel bad because obviously she's in Taiwan. So mm -hmm. if I if I have a lesson at 11 a.m., it's one in the morning for her, <laughs> <laughs> and she's been up all day doing her her life, and um, so and she has lessons until like maybe noon, so it's like two in the morning for her, and that's when she gets done. But it's really the same. Like it's a Zoom call. You say hello. I play. I hope I'm not overloading the microphone every time I play, so she can actually hear what I'm playing. Um, and it's just I put my laptop in that little cubby. Right there is like they, these two things are cubbies, so I just kind of turn it facing this way, so it, that's just kind of how it works. And uh, she gives me comments, and she'll play on her desk if she wants to. If I like messed up a rhythm or something, so it flows pretty much the way it would if we were in that little room on campus. So it works pretty well. 
And I actually took a couple lessons from her, like before they shut down campus, like before spring break when all this was going on. Um, like I would just take my laptop into the practice room, put it next to the marimba, and I would just play. And she'd be in her apartment. She'd have her marimba. So like we would just like play stuff at each other pretty much. Mm -hmm. It's pretty much the same as a normal lesson. Yeah. I haven't had one since then because, you know, I don't have a marimba at my apartment. Mm. Uh, I guess the next thing that we can get into is just kind of like general percussion life at UNA. So I guess let's just talk about like what is expected of a normal UNA percussion studio member. Go, Logan. It's going to sound kind of, you know, like, duh. But really, <laughs> the bare minimum. Like, it's, it's kind of actually amazing seeing how little some people can do. And it's not that I'm talking about any certain person. I've just been here for a while. So I, I've, seen, I've seen the ringer, you know, I've been around. And it's really, you can survive in the studio. You can survive as a percussionist even if, you just, if you're just able to get in, practice what you need to, work on what you need to, you'll be fine. Your success, mm -hmm. your mileage with it will vary, but like... Literally, just getting in and just doing what you're supposed to do at the minimum, it'll, it'll help so much. And then it, yeah. if after you do that, you'll feel good. You're like, man, I did a good thing. So you want to do more, and then et cetera, et cetera. I've noticed in my three years is there's people who do literally everything they can. They're there all day. They perform in every single ensemble. And, you know, they get what they want to get out of it. And then there's people who perform in the one ensemble they have to. They take the lessons and they practice just enough to play their things. So there really is a wide range of what you can do. Now, what you should do is relative to the person, like based on what you want to get out of it. You know, you're only going to get out of this degree as much as you put into it. Yep. So if you, if you don't want to practice every day and you just want to do what you got to do, then that's what you're going to get. But if you want to practice every day and – Make sure you're prepared for your ensembles, your recitals, you pass your hearing and all that stuff. Then you're, then you're going to do that if that's, if that's what you want out of it. Cool to it see the spectrum. It depends on what you want to do in the future as well. Like, mm -hmm. you know, if you're a, a performance major, I think that goes without saying. Like, you need to be in there every day grinding because they only accept the best of the best out there, you know? Mm -hmm. Like... If you're an education major, you need to be more geared toward that, like doing your education classes, going out, getting your teaching hours, like, mm -hmm. and almost all of us teach band camps, but like, especially the education majors need to be going out and doing that because like, that's going to be what they're doing for the rest of their lives. Right. You know, like if you're wanting to go to graduate school or something like that, um, you know, you need to be studying your theory a lot. Um, you also need to be practicing a lot because, like, especially if you get, like, an assistantship or something, you're going to be teaching lessons probably. So you right. need to know what you're talking about. I'd say that those people need to be doing the same thing that the performance majors would be doing. And then, like, I don't know, like, if you're, like, more into the drum set thing, like, obviously you need to be playing drum set a lot. You need to be getting your styles down. Um, and like, a, this is what I've come to realize because I'm trying to get more into that area lately is like almost all the modern drummers that are gigging drummers, session drummers, they are very familiar with like Pro Tools, Logic, GarageBand, like all of those digital audio workstations. And so like, I would say if you're going into that area, you need to familiarize yourself with those as well. Cause that's mm -hmm. like an integral part of the industry these days, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I think like what, what Wiggins always says is, you know, it all comes together. If you're if you're gonna be like, you know, DCI dude for the rest of your life, you still gotta know, you know, yellow after the rain. You gotta know, you gotta know all those like this really basic repertoire. You still gotta be able to do all that. Which I feel like coming in, especially a lot of people don't really understand. Like they come in, they're like, you know, I'm just gonna go play drums for Jason Aldean or whatever, <laughs> you know. And, so specific. And, and then they get here and, the, and they get to the lesson and they're, 
they're kind of like side eye glancing at the drum set while Wiggins is talking to them about marimba, and they they miss so much information that way. Yeah, I think that's probably like what's so cool about UNA is just the amount of things you can do at the university yes. is insane. Like the the range of instruments that which this faculty teaches is nuts. Like you can take individual lessons in general percussion, marimba. Bowron, hand drums, um, drum set, vibraphone, jazz, jazz vibraphone specifically. So it's like it's a really – you can do whatever you want. You can come here and you can find your niche and you can just go with it. Now, of course, you got to do everything else, but you can like really push hard into doing what you want here. And I think that's what's so cool about coming here is just all those possibilities and opportunities. Yeah, and I'm think, speaking from I'm speaking for myself on this topic. Like you know, I came in. I was one of those flame drag fighter pilot marching dudes, and I liked I liked to, to play drum set. That's all I wanted to do in the future. But like, <clears throat> you know, doing all these other things like marimba lessons, jazz vibes, or and all that stuff, it just helps you become a better musician. Like your musicianship will skyrocket. Like even to playing things like concert snare drum and band or something you're like all right i gotta think musically about this part as opposed to like your high school stuff it's just like i'm just gonna play the rhythms at whatever dynamic i want and you know i just want to play drum set and snare drum that's all i want like it your mentality will change just by doing all those other things yeah i think the most interesting thing that i found like going through una is um i came in with like kind of the same mentality as a lot of people do around this area I love the marching band thing, right? And that's what I like to do. But now um, I'm coming out of it wanting to play Bowron a whole lot. And, you know, that's just like two different <laughs> yeah. ends of cultures, really. I thought, I mean, that's pretty interesting to me. Yeah, when I came in, it was, you know, I yeah, I love marching band. And I really loved it. And I was like, maybe I could just kind of like do marching band and that'd be it. And I was like, no, I should really like check out and see what this whole being a music major thing is about. And, now I realize that, yes, marching band is like probably my favorite thing to do, but I think I've grown so much more as a person and as just a general performer just by doing other things, by, by playing marimba yeah. every single semester. And my one semester of jazz vibes, I'm not good at jazz vibes. I'm not. I took one semester of it. I'm not good at it. But I learned so much in that yes. short amount of time. Uh, the jazz vibes instructor here, his name is Tyler Tolles. Dr. Tyler Tolles. Dr. Now. Tyler Tolles. He just, he just recently doctor. became a doctor. He's now minted. Uh, he, I may not have understood what was going on 100% of the time, but when stuff clicked in there, it was so good. Like, it made so much sense. It helped me everywhere else. My theory grade literally improved every week after my jazz vibe lesson because I'd learned something else that would help me out in that class. So I think just, you know, you, you come here – you expect to do one thing, you get thrown in this other direction, and then that direction is where you find out you really just want to go. And that, that's pretty cool. Yeah. I that's can, just really I can... about being open. Yeah. You know, it's like, you know, Wiggins always talks about how he he just wanted to teach, or he didn't want to teach, actually, or something mm -hmm. like that. And then he went to his master's, and then he found out he really likes doing chamber music. And then, you know, it just blossoms from there. Like, my entire time here, I've said contemporary music is like 100% not my thing. I get it. It's cool. I think it's an awesome thing for people to play. I just don't want to do it. But that John Cage music circus we did, that was one of the most fun things I've ever done. It was yeah, fun. silly. It was definitely weird. But I had so much fun doing it that I want to do more things like that. You know, yeah. that I think that's just the best part is like, if you just, if you don't be jaded, like you just try things, you're either going to have a good time or you're going to find a new thing. At, at yes. most... You've learned something. Just say yes. If Dr. Williams comes to you and says, hey, I want you to play for this, we go, all right, cool, let's do it. I'll play on it. You Why know, not? You might, you might, you know, sweat a little bit, might wet the bed a little bit, but just say yes. It all works. Yes. That, that's what was cool about, like, the studio requiring all of us to have our own, like, John Cage solo for that music circus was, like, there are a ton of people out there who say, oh, I hate contemporary music. Like, <clears throat> it's stupid. Like, I can write that stuff. It's easy. Like, it doesn't take any talent at all. I'm not going to lie. I was one of those people at first <laughs> as well. But um, just, like, doing that kind of music, like, practicing my solo, like, figuring everything out and actually performing it, like, I had a ton of fun. Granted, contemporary music is still not my favorite thing, but, like, I have a whole new appreciation for it. And yeah. 
I'm I appreciate the opportunity to do that, like playing with Second Construction with our group on that concert, mm-hmm. and then doing composed improvisation for snare drum. Like, yeah, it it brought like coming to school here in this percussion studio will just broaden your mind about music in general. Oh yeah, Second Construction was a lot of fun. We had it was. we had some really good times. Not not, not at first. Not not at <laughs> first. At yeah, first, we, we did thing. not. The funniest thing about both the pieces we played is we didn't like them at first, but then wound up really liking them towards the end. And extremes, yeah, it was I like, was so it, mad when we played extremes. I was so mad for like a week, and then it's now my favorite piece I've ever played. Yeah, same. But like for, for the yeah, first there's, there's week, that like, solid week where we complain about everything. Yeah, the first week I was like, I hate it. It's dumb. It's stupid. I don't want to learn it. Who wrote it? Why this guy sucks? And then. About a month in, I'm like, I actually love this piece to death. I want to play it so much. And then we met Jason, had him come in, and he taught with us for an hour. And that was just, I fell in love with the piece even more. It was, yeah. And, the, and yeah, then like the part, part, part of the fun thing up. with that kind of stuff is like mm. the journey, you know? Yeah. Like learning how to do it and like building it. That was fun. I mean, it's stupid. Figuring and it, it was out. tough. Like, <laughs> yeah. I think we had like three rehearsals with us set up in the wrong spot. <laughs> we, we figured it out like three weeks in. We we're like, hey, we're not like oh, standing yeah. in the right spot. Yeah, what happened with that was like, um, you like we were all doing like the core note thing on the bell with the wrong hand. We were doing the core note with the right <laughs> hand, and then the rhythm with the left hand. Or no, I think you, you and I were switched on that, Caleb. Yeah, we because, were. But then like we had to switch that around, and so like, well, because me and you were facing each other, to, like, we're supposed to stay next to each other. Yeah, I had to like get used to like doing the core note on my left hand now and doing the rhythm with my right and. I just remember there was one point where when we were first learning that, um, you know, Jake and I were living together at this time, and he walked in and we were going to work on the rhythms in there, and I just look at him like, what the heck is this? Like, <laughs> I don't know what to do. This is just weird. Yeah, I remember, do you remember uh, that, that very first time that we actually got like, it was that really hard, long rhythm. It was like where we all had four cities. Yeah, and then we finally yes. got like one time through, and we just lost our minds. I remember you threw both of your sticks like across the yard because we were because we were outside, like <laughs> like so we were just sitting right outside the music building and playing on a table. We weren't even playing on the actual instruments yet. I ran. In, Jake was like rolling on the ground. Logan threw his sticks. I was running in circles. Like we were just. I all think, because I think it Jake right started once. climbing that tree and started. Oh, that is what he it, did. Like, outside yeah, he the tree. <laughs> yeah. that tree. It's a good tree. Man. That that popped up in my memories like two weeks ago, and I sat there and I watched it again. It's a lot of fun, a lot of fun. And then second construction was the same way. We got it, and we were, I think we were all at one point like, "This is dumb. This this piece doesn't make any sense. Why was it written this way?" And towards the end, at least for me, I started having so much fun with it. Like it was yeah, so much fun to play. If you don't complain about John Cage at least once in your life, are you really a percussionist? Um, You're not even trying. I, I, I feel yeah. like you don't you don't learn the piece until you say it sucks, and then you learn how great it is, really. And one thing I didn't expect one or one way I didn't expect to feel like during this quarantine and with everything going online, obviously our end of the year percussion ensemble concert got canceled, and like one of the first things that popped in my mind was like. Dang it, we're not going to be able to perform second construction again. Like, and Jake's yeah, recital. The, the music Play circus was all for that, you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I and we were going to perform it on Jake's recital. recital. Yeah. <laughs> what are they doing for your recital, Jake? Uh, since I had my um, hearing before all this and I passed mm-hmm. my hearing, they passed me on my recital. Dang. I mean, they don't even have to do it. Wow. I mean, that's good. Have you thought about recording it or something? What? Have you thought about recording it or something, or I mean, yeah, still I using have. it? Or what? Yeah, I mean, I still have all that stuff. I have some cool stuff too. I was playing on it that I would like to record, but I have to have a graduate recital. So I'm like, well, I might as well just save all that and play it on my graduate recital right. too. <laughs> Do you stop speaking on your graduate recital? Heck yeah, yeah, definitely. I like that piece. I like that piece a lot. It's a really fun piece. I'm working on a Deus Ex Metronome. Have you heard that piece? That's cool. Oh yeah, mm. that it's super fun. It's a good one. It's a really good one. Are you learning anything, Logan? What are you learning right now? Uh, I'm learning two things right now. I'm learning slide of evil hand, slide of an evil hand. Casey mm-hmm. Cangelosi. It's that one with the metronome. Mm-hmm. It's like sits there and you play on the metronome. That's really fun. Then I'm also learning uh, to Moscow. It's the Europa Morocco piece with like sound effects and 
okay. lights and all that stuff. That's cool. You learn anything, Truman? <clears throat> um, not really like percussion studio wise. Um, but you know, for this quarantine to kill a lot of my boredom, I recently got an electronic drum set, and it has like changed yeah. everything for me. Heck you know. Yeah. So, like, I've just been, I have a bunch of drum set books. What's that one that Wiggins had for us this semester? Was that Fresh Approach? I think it was Fresh Approach to Drum Set. I think so. I I haven't worked out of it with him because I'm in drum set lessons with Mm. It's a good book. I like that book a lot. But, like, I've been going through that book, like, some of the more advanced stuff in there. Like, I'm getting, trying to get all my styles down, like, Mm -hmm. Jazz shuffle, all that stuff like bossa nova, samba, um, and I'm like just learning licks, you know. Yeah, I, I just think I want got. To get, I just want to get a lot better at drum set. I think I got to the punk part, like the punk. There's a section in there where it's like punk, and that's where I got. There was and one I'm part. Um, terrible at drum set, by the way. Gosh, what um, the song go like the song. I didn't get there. I didn't get there. Um, One thing I was trying to do, like, working through the book is, like, get my left foot independence down on it, like, keeping the quarter note, and then, like, moving to the eighth notes, offbeat eighth notes, and it was really hard. I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it, like, immediately, so I need to break it super slow. That was one of the first things Pat Petrillo worked with with me, and, like, broke my brain. It it is (laughs) still one of the hardest things for me. And it's like, He's like, all right, let's, let's hit a basic. He's like, left foot independence. It's like, what? <laughs> yeah, that's a basic. You're left foot. Yeah. I haven't really been learning any pieces, but I've been composing a whole lot. Um, yeah. Uh, like for composition lessons, we kind of scrapped everything we were working on up until the quarantine, and we got this new project. So we all wrote black MIDI pieces, and we're going to have like a Zoom uh, concert of all the that's black cool. MIDI pieces that everybody wrote. So I know, mind I know you, what, I've heard of a black MIDI piece before, but can you explain it some yes, more? Yes, I can. I would love to. Uh, black MIDI is definitely, definitely a genre of music where the first time you hear it, you go, this is garbage. Why would anybody <laughs> do this? It doesn't make any sense. So black MIDI is a concept. It's basically it's music that can't be played by people. Like if I gave you the score, which I wrote, you'd go, I can't play that. And I go, I know, you're not supposed to. Um, it's... The, the, the name of it comes from you put so many notes and like so much stuff on the page that it turns the whole page black. So I think at oh. one point, oh yeah. yeah, at one point I have sextuplet runs coming from the lowest note on a piano and from the highest note on a piano, and they're coming down like this, like in the and they're crossing it and going upwards. But there's thirds stacked on those. Um, so I think at one point there's a total of 57 notes happening in one partial of a ninelet. Um, I think in total, my piece has like 7,000 notes in it in a two-minute span. Jeez. Uh, so it's it's so terrible to listen to because, well, it's really cool. It has this really weird effect because the computer doesn't know what's going on. Like the computer trying to play back is like, what, what are you doing to me? This doesn't make sense. It's trying to trigger all these sound files at one point to line up in the right spot. Um, but it's pretty cool. Like. like just go on YouTube and look up Black MIDI. You'll see all kinds of things. And there's like a tame Black MIDI, and then there's like all out as many notes as possible Black MIDI. It's pretty cool. And so there's which like one, which one are you going for? Like tame um, or all out? I wanted to go for tame, and then change it to all out halfway through because it was much cooler to do it that way. Um, eventually, I'll pull it up, and not today, but at some point, I'll I'll let you guys see what it is. But it's. Really, it's a really cool project that I didn't think I'd ever do. I'm like, why would I ever write that? <laughs> I write stuff that gets played. I don't want to do that. But uh, it's really, it kind of opened me up to this whole new genre of music that I really, really just didn't care about before. So it's pretty cool. It's pretty neat, I would say. Have you guys found any like interesting opportunities on the interweb because of all of this um, quarantine stuff going going on? I mean, really, the only thing that's like kind of there is now all these high schoolers are like free to to like want lessons. Yeah. So I feel like the teaching market for private lessons is like booming right now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, yeah, I, I did a teaching. mini like teaching thing because of that. I just basically did like a chop session online and just talked about exercises and stuff and it's 
it's interesting for sure. Yeah. I was already teaching private lessons and one of them was already over Skype, but then like I moved all the others to online and it's been pretty much the same. It's just on the computer now. Like yeah. before I came to UNA, like I would take snare Skype lessons from people. So yeah, it was I something I was already used to. That market is getting the boom. Um, I think what's really cool is a lot of these like really high level percussionists are doing like free Zoom master classes. They're like, hey, yeah. here's a Zoom and I'm going to be talking about the thing I'm known for around the world. Come hang out and you can you go know, there like and watch. Steve Weiss will stream some of that stuff like on Facebook mm -hmm. or something. Like the other day, they did it with Paul and Sandy Rennick. Yeah. So it's like mm -hmm. there's stuff like that everywhere right now. Cause people just want to like do what they normally do but can't. So they're like, let's just do it online. And like in a way, that's what Dr. Wiggins has been doing with us with all of our Zoom calls and Dr. Pan as well. They've just been bringing in a bunch of people to talk to mm -hmm. us, go over stuff. So yeah. everybody who watches this, this and doesn't this know. Way, we're getting way more opportunities. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So for anybody who watches this and doesn't know anything about UNA, Dr. Tracy Wiggins is the director of percussion and, and the assistant band director here at the University of North Alabama. So if we say Dr. Wiggins, that's who we're talking about. Dr. Pan is another um, staff member here, and she is, like, in charge of the drum set. Not the drum set. The marimba. <laughs> Not drum <laughs> set. She teaches marimba here and uh, is in charge. She also runs some of the percussion ensemble. Yeah, and she, she runs the percussion ensemble. So um, that's who we're talking about when we say those names. Um, but, yeah, we, we've had, like, Mac, like Mike McIntosh, Lalo Dav Davila, Davila. I can never say his name right. I, but I butcher it every time and I feel so bad. A lot of the people at MTSU say it like Davila, but I yeah. don't know. Like, That's Mr. What I've like seen. Mr. Crosby said Davila one day when he borrowed yeah. my Davila mm. snare stick, so I don't know. Like, I don't know. Uh, all I know is that was a really cool class. Adam Pam. That, that man's, yeah, the Adam Tam one was really cool. That Dr. Yeah. Pam Prot. Yeah. Pam. I've been watching his videos for years, so it was really cool to be that, like, hey, I'm, I'm like that's talking to you. Another ridiculous now. thing about UNA is like, our our professors have like connections out the wazoo. It's Dr. not Wiggins, fair. It's not fair. I mean, that's I why we have Roger Carter at Sounds of, yeah. or no, not at um, Day of Percussion mm -hmm. a couple of years ago, and why we've had like Brett Kuhn, Mike McIntosh, John Weber, and all those people come Paul out. Rennick. Yeah. That's why mm -hmm. Bill Bachman is judging doing the quad videos. Yeah. I'm there. I'm, I'm I'm like scared. <laughs> like I'm the captain and I'm scared. I'm, like, scared. I'm afraid. I'm afraid to send him videos. I really am. Yeah, um, the next year's core line is literally just Bill. He's, he's cutting Bill. on you. <laughs> Bill's gonna roll. <laughs> just he Bill. plays by himself. He outplays the entire snare line with one finger. Like it's it's unreal. <laughs> now, like you could go to any prominent percussion figure, walk up to them, and go, "Hi, do you know who Doctor Wiggins is?" Not even say his first name. They go, oh yeah, I love Tracy, hundred <laughs> percent. Like he knows everyone. It's insane. Yeah. He tries to be humble about it. Oh but yeah, he, he's a big name. He big acts name. like he's like not big in this world. This man's huge. It. I mean, yeah, he's on the PAS board. Isn't that why he was? Me? Yeah, he was elected to the PAS board or something recently. Yeah. So that it's nuts. The man knows everyone, and it's great. He's famous. Yes, he, he basically is famous. Incredibly if, humble too, which yeah, I appreciate. If you, if you talk to him and you're like, "Hey, you know everyone," he goes, "Not really. I don't know. Ev yet. He knows everyone." I Gu mean, guaranteed. <laughs> again, he does. That's, don't go lie. That's how we got Roger Carter here, Mike McIntosh, Brett Kuhn, um, Rich and, Redman to yeah. teach the drum oh, set class for two nuts. semesters. Yeah, for those of you who don't know, Rich Redman is the drummer for Jason Aldean. <laughs> which is why I thought it was funny when you were like, "I want to be Jason Aldean's drummer." <laughs> yeah, accidentally, it, like completely was the accident. I uh, first came to job. Yeah, <laughs> give me that. Yeah, go for it, kid. Yeah, Redman graduated <laughs> from North Texas, so yeah. yeah. <laughs> and there's been like just all the staff here is just quality. Like, there's not yeah. one person who I'm like I would not want to take lessons. I want to take lessons from everybody. It's great. Like, and that's probably like one of the biggest things that drove me here, along with the marching band, just being at the level of that. It's just the people who teach here are, like, prominent in their field. Like, it's insane. Like, Dr. Pan's a world-renowned solo player. Um, I'm pretty sure Mr. Crusby is very huge in the um, Byron community as well. It's just 
it's nuts to think of that the amount of talent that we have not only as like students but as teachers is insane mr crust yeah. is just knowledgeable about many Everything. things and he's and not only is he knowledgeable he's very enthusiastic about like Yes. Almost everything. Ask that man a question, and you'll have that question and twenty other questions answered, and you're totally okay with it. You're like, I need to know all you of that. Thank you. Always learning with him. Like oh, yeah. when I was helping him this this uh, winter, I was like, you know, I showed up expecting just to help out and like teach here and there. He was still teaching me while I was teaching. It was <laughs> very bizarre, but it was awesome. Like I, I learned so much. Taking and the it, percussion it was, methods class. Like he taught the percussion methods class. Me and Truman took it at the same time. Yeah, it was like even as percussionist, I learned so much just about one how to mm-hmm. teach it, and just like because you forget when you play this thing for twelve years, you forget what the beginning is. Like you forget that at one point you didn't know what C to C was on a keyboard. You had no idea, and so just like hearing how to do that, and he explained it in such a perfect way that just made it make sense. Yeah. Really I cool. Think- a couple weeks ago, you know, um, <clears throat> another thing that we have at UNA is a marching pedagogy yeah. class, which is really, really cool, cool where you learn about, like, history, marching percussion, how to teach it, how to write for it, and all that. Um, highly recommend taking. But one of the recent projects that we had to do was interview prominent sound designers in the DCI and WGI field. It's a really cool and project. Mr. Crespi does the sound design and audio for Sparkman High School. And so just, like, like that zoom call with him like i had like six or seven interview questions and obviously they were going to be expanded upon but like he just started showing me like all these other things and i learned just like a ton of information from him just in like that 40 minute call yeah and he's so nice too (laughs) unbelievably nice i highly recommend taking lessons from him yeah same (laughs) really 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 cool guy (laughs) <laughs> glad he teaches here you go in to learn about balron which a lot of people don't know what that is but and then you leave the lesson learning about literally everything else as well and it's the strangest <laughs> yeah. thing ever it's a small it's life lesson about, like, electronics from him yeah yeah, yeah. It's like you, you, there was one week. you learn about you electronics the drum, the drum. yeah it's mm, man electronics the drum then you learn about like some obscure band yep <laughs> <laughs> being yeah, an undergraduate percussionist at una is incredibly humbling oh man <laughs> that's, that's for sure yeah you yeah, you, like, you get that ego out of you so fast yeah, you're like oh, I'm so hot it's not so you you're, not. Up and... you're bad it's <laughs> you're it's bad. it's crazy like the things that you'll do here like i know caleb can testify to this but like one of the craziest times like in my undergrad was our sophomore year again for that day of percussion, like Caleb and I went and picked Roger Carter up from the airport in Huntsville and rode with him for like an hour and a half back to Florence. Like Man. we took him to dinner. I bought his dinner for him. Vibes, dude. Great. It was it was like really good conversations at dinner and like it was just crazy. Like Roger Carter sat in the front seat of my car. <laughs> and I drove him home <laughs> in my car. So yeah. Also yeah sat no, in front seat of my no one house. else has sat in that front seat since then. No. Exactly. Like I've I also, it empty. No one else is gonna sit there after Roger Carter. I also That's don't wash my seat. Out. My seat hasn't been washed since he sat in it. <laughs> I don't. I don't, don't want to do that. No, but yeah, I, you, you come in here, and everybody who comes here was the it person at their high school. They were the first chair. They they were the one who showed everybody how to do things. And you get here, and you're like, oh, I'm nowhere near as good as I thought I was. Cool. Yeah. But then you realize that everybody's really here to help each other. Like. Everybody's gonna help you out. If, if you if you walk into your practice room and you ask somebody a question, ninety nine point nine percent of the times they're gonna be super nice, helpful, give you anything you need. But then there's that point zero one where they're like trying to get something done and you're just bothering them, so they're like, get out, like go somewhere else. <laughs> but, but then even, they're probably gonna help you later, or like, yeah, but, like well, this person knows yeah. what they're talking about when it comes to this as well, and they're like in that room over there, so just go talk yeah, to it's, them. It's yeah. a really nice small little community that we have here, and it's really. It's a really cool, neat thing to be a part yeah. of. It's definitely like big school teaching at a little school. Because like, I feel like we're getting the same level, if not more or more quality level of like schools that you hear in Texas or Michigan mm-hmm. or just and any like, of those schools. Like we're getting the same amount of education or, you know, as good 
and we're just because that's the thing about it. You come from your high school, you you know, you know three colleges. You got Auburn, Alabama, and UNA. <laughs> Those are the three you know coming out of an Alabama college. Or Alabama yeah, high school. Yeah. You brought up an interesting point, Logan, because like a lot of people go to those big name schools because of like the prominent percussion person or music person who's teaching there. But like what they don't realize is a lot of the time, like that person is there, like maybe like not they're not there as much as they think. You know, they're doing their own clinics. They're yeah. going to other schools yeah. doing clinics and like doing all these other workshops as a and, like they're still like the professor there and they're still gonna see them, but it's like here, like our professors are here, like ninety to ninety-five percent of the time, mm-hmm. and you're getting quality mm-hmm. instruction almost all the time. And, and we still get to see those other people. Videos, as well. and you're gonna get feedback from your videos. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what's really neat is just the amount of guests that come here, and that, and that goes back to Doctor Wiggins just knowing everybody on the face of the planet. Is if you walk in his office, you say, "Hey." I think a master class with this person would be really cool. He'd go, oh, it's on the schedule for like a month from now. Like, he didn't even know. Like, some world-renowned artist is coming in to talk to you. It's been on schedule for a year. And you're like, hey, that'd be really cool. It's like, oh, it's already happening? Didn't know. Or I guess I'll be there did, now. Uh, it might be in the works. Like, it might be happening. I, I cannot confirm nor deny that that will be happening. <laughs> That's the one. That's yeah. the one. Me and him were talking about like some of the stuff I wanted to play for my recital. I was going to play that Cottage Industrial piece by um, Alex Smith, who was in that Zoom with us with Dr. Pan a few, uh, maybe a week ago now, not too long ago. And I told him that he's like, "Oh yeah, he's supposed to come here uh, next semester for, um, for a clinic." And I was like, "Oh really?" <laughs> it's like, yeah. just no, you name them, they've probably been here since he's been here, or they're going yeah. here, or they're going to be very soon. You know, and so it's really cool to just like every semester i think i've seen someone who i'm like man it'd be really cool to meet them and i've sat like 10 feet away from them as they blew my face off with how good they are at percussion it's it's cool to go to something like like when we went to basic we saw all these people that had already been to our university yeah <laughs> that, that's pretty interesting like i didn't have to pay to see you last time yeah it's nuts. <laughs> i didn't pay this time either but i should have and uh, logan and i went to that music for all thing and most of the people there that were given clinics i'd say like a good 80 percent of those people had been to una at some point yeah yeah or they like saw our name badge like ah that's another thing about una is like you don't like I never realized like when I decided to go here like how many people knew what UNA is like specifically in the marching community and just in the percussion community like I was marching at Alchemy Independent at the time and um it's funny because the guy who runs that was actually under staff with Dr. Wiggins at Carolina Gold um I also marched there Dr. Wiggins used to be the caption head there but um they all found out that I was going to UNA and they're like oh dude UNA sick I'm like Really? Because I never really heard of them until about like five months ago when I decided to apply. <laughs> yeah. One thing that's really cool is um, when we were at PASIC, I had a UNA shirt on. And I went to go buy my mallets from, I think it was the mallet source or the percussion source booth. Percussion source. Yeah. And I, and I, and I walk up there with my shirt on. And he goes, oh, the, the guy who was like taking payments. I'm like, oh, Dr. Wiggins teaches there, right? And I'm like, yeah. I'm like, okay, cool. It gave me a 10% discount. Just because Dr. Wiggins, just because he knew who he was. Yeah, uh, a guy at Mallet Labs gave me a free mallet or a free uh, marimba. It was crazy. Oh, yeah. Shut up. <laughs> where is it? Show it to us. Yeah. Where, Logan? Show, yeah. show me your free marimba. Come on, Logan. Show it. Oh, what a it's small marimba. Place. That's not even a marimba. I can't. I can't with you. Yeah, that oh, guy man. ripped you off. Yeah, you got scammed, Logan. <laughs> Hashtag get scammed. Oh. Uh, yeah, so that's, that's basically why UNA is the best. So just come here. <laughs> just casually come here. It's fine. You want to know the college? Drop out. Come here. It's fine. It's whatever. Love to have you. Percussion studio is already huge. Let's just make it bigger. That, that is the other thing. We're a very large studio it's for like, like the size of the we are. We're very yeah, large. You, you look 22? at the size of all the other studios in like the music program and they're not bad size, but like they're like 10 to 15 people, but then you look at the percussion studio and we're like 
20 plus people. I'm, yeah. I would guess that like we're going to be in the 30s soon. It's I mean, the closest, the, the closest studio is the saxophone studio. Yeah. They're the only ones that are even like within five of us. Yeah. And that's what also means it's cool is there's so many people that do this that if you want to get a piece played or play a piece, you could walk up to anybody and be like, hey, I want to play this. And they're, like, and they're probably free. Like, they're probably pretty free to just play another piece, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so that's cool. And there's always opportunities to make small ensembles and to just, like, do AKA whatever you want. Us. AKA how well, we actually, got I thought, no, wait, we were going to be no, we were assigned. We were yeah. assigned to extremes because AJ, AJ Kobe, who AJ used to Kobe. be a professor here, like he just Good. assigned us to that. I'm on Avalo now, and like, like I special requested this group. Okay, thank you. All right. Oh, was it you, yeah. Logan? Did you did you start yeah. this? Really? You're I the, did. You're the, you're the founder of this. You're the you're reason welcome. I'm wasting my time with you people. Well, no, I didn't want to see. <laughs> I love you all. I'm just kidding. Um. Yeah, so that was super cool to just it's it, it's so easy to find a small ensemble to do here. You can just make one up; it's fine. Just get your <laughs> friends and start playing stuff. Yeah, yeah. Fresh, that's fresh here is pretty fun. There's a, there's a lot of opportunities, and yeah. because like you're saying with all the connections that we have, if you can't find an opportunity, ask about one. There's gonna be one. Yeah, it'll get made. It'll happen. Anything you want basically will happen. I mean, that's kind of how we played Second Construction as this quartet again this year. It was because, like, we played Extremes last year and we enjoyed being in this group and playing with each other so much that we just talked about, we're like, we want to make this, like, a thing. We want to play in this as much as we can. And so, like, that's how we were put into the group again to play Second Construction. Hence and, why this group does this podcast now. And that's why, well, I don't think everyone calls us that, but, like, a we lot do. Of- do call us X percussion. We, we call Pan ourselves that, call and Doctor Pan does. That's the important part. Doctor Pan yeah. does call us X percussion. Doctor Wiggins is so against it. He does. So Doctor does call us that. He gets he gets a little upset every time we do that. And we were listed on my program for my recital as X percussion. Okay, that's okay. Yeah, okay, that's true. That's true. <laughs> that's, true. that's true. Yeah, G- getting introduced by Doctor Pan as X percussion was pretty cool. It made it seem really official and not just four college dudes playing a piece together. Yeah. Yeah. Good time. Good time. I think I included X percussion on like my, what was that thing we had to do for Dr. Pan? It was, was it the performance bio or something? I think it was I, some kind of bio. I yeah. put something about X percussion on there. Cause I put something about playing a percussion ensemble. I said, like, I also play with this group called X percussion and we perform yada, yada, yada so far. The world famous X percussion. <laughs> Listen, Listen, you're world famous if you say you are. Exactly. Yeah, I had, I had that video of us playing extremes shared like four times. I yeah, would say. I, I think I think I got three up. shares as well, so that's like seven shares. That's a lot that's of shares. Same. Dr. Pan, I, I shared one of those Dr. times. And she's yeah. in Taiwan, so that's world. That's world. Exactly. That's, world. that's, that's international. Is world. That is true. Yeah. She's it's probably talked to someone over there about us. Like, hey, Specifically us four. I teach yeah. these weird guys that call themselves X percussion, and they make me call them that. So, <laughs> against my this will, this guy <laughs> make, built this piece, so he made one. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, good times, good times. Well, I think we've talked about a lot of good things today. What do you guys think? Yeah, and then, um, we're hoping that this becomes a weekly thing, um, but you know, we'll see how that goes with quarantine and all that. But Ronication. Uh, Ronication. <laughs> that's a that's a I've never heard that before. That's good. Really? I was that's like a that. hashtag on I'm a bunch of social that. media platforms. I'm putting that everywhere. It's in my Instagram bio. Don't worry. Um anything else before we sign off, gentlemen? Uh be on the lookout. We might upload videos. That's another thing we might do. Possibly. We'll see. We'll Don't see how it goes. Know. We're going to try and start talking about guests. that conversation we have where we learn pieces and then just like record us playing them and then upload yeah. them. Yeah. Yeah. We, yeah. We, we have ideas. Let's just leave it at that. We have ideas. Um, Things are we're going to try and be on the edge of your seat. Yeah. Look, there's a giant pot, right? And this is the X percussion does things pot and we're stirring it. You know what I mean? We're, we're stirring it. 
We're two hands turning over here. <laughs> yeah, so we're Where's definitely going to try butter? and get some guests on here maybe next week, but stay tuned for that. Um, so again, my name's Caleb. That's I'm, I'm going to point to where they are on my screen. That's Logan. That's Jake. And that's Truman. Uh, we are the ex percussion boys. I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't know what I'm doing. We'll get I'll, better at this as yeah, we go. Listen, we don't we don't know what we're doing. We're, we're, we're four dudes. We've probably never done a podcast before, but it's whatever. I've never done All a right. podcast. Well, bye.